Hello there, welcome to Programmer Parent. I'm Rick, and today I'm going to talk to you about multiboxing or multitasking in computer games. I'm quite sure that you've spoken to your kids on the phone and they go like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll do that. And you know they're there, but they're not really there. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I have um, play games for most of my growing up in life and I've played a lot of what we call multi-boxing that means uh, say playing EverQuest or World of Warcraft on two computers at the same time uh, helping my team in game serving two roles at the same time I find that extremely fun because you need to be very tactical and you need to script and you need to learn a lot of stuff to follow the rules entirely in the game yet figure out ways to make things better like slash follow in game and stuff like that so you set up the keys to to make it easy to support steering two characters at the same time but of course that also distracts you so you have to have someone in the air who's aware of what you're doing so you help them do things they can't do without you that they have to help you do things that you wouldn't have to think about if you just focused on one character. And quite often we forget that loss of information or loss of conscious thinking or perception when we play games. It's easy and it's the same thing in real life. I work a lot with distant teams and <laughs> having just a phone instead of having someone in the meeting physically is a huge loss of information and a huge cause of misunderstanding if we're not aware of it. If we're aware of it, it's not a problem. But if we think what you and it, that you could literally, you probably work with someone that they used to be close and then there was a shift in organization and they moved just around the corner and you don't see each other as, uh, as much. And even if they are 50 meters away from you instead of 20 meters away from you, things slip or get misunderstood because you don't have that interaction that you used to. And then adding video or voice, there's a lot of studies going how, how big a packet loss we have when we shift mediums in things. And we have this in games too. And I think it's good and healthy to talk to our kids about it. What happens when they pick up the phone like this? Yeah, sure, I'll do that and really f so busy playing something. It's quite often way more effective to call back and finish the match, if that's what I'm gonna do, and call back so they can focus. When I was younger, I did some sales training and what they said was, if you really, really wanna be present when you're doing a sales call, face the wall. You know, the empty, boring wall, so you're not distracted, but you're present with the person you're talking to. And that is so important. What I did right now, for example, was just watching the clock. If you'd seen my clock, you'd know I did that. If I'm picking up my phone, you, you're probably thinking I'm checking emails. And if we're aware of cues like this, communication is easier. But when we're on the phone, we don't have that. But we notice when they're really not present, right? And, and when we talk with a gamer who's focused, perhaps, uh, and this, of course this goes up and down depending on the intensity of the game they're playing right now. Um, so as a parent, perhaps if you're asking for food and it's time to go down and stuff like that, you might get a yes, but not the action you thought. Be aware of that and of course talk to them about that. But more importantly, you choose before you answer, is this an important call? If it is a, a call for your, from your employer or your, if you're looking for a job, a potential employer, if it's a call from someone that matters, it's really, really important that they prioritize that. That means temporarily putting the game away. Not thinking, yeah, I'm gonna do this easy quest where I don't have to think. 
<laughs> they might not know that you're distracted by something easily done. They are going to compare you to someone who's focused. And that's their job. Nothing personal against the individual, but their job is to choose the person who's focused on the phone. Not someone, that, well, I'm just going to get this question while I'm on the phone anyway. And if we can have them choose presence in the game when they're playing the game and in presence with other stuff, it's a win-win. They will be refreshed when they dive into the game again. So, it will, and even more important, if they choose the right kind of manager and boss and clients, they're going to have the life of their dream that works perfect with their gaming passion too. So it's really, really important to think about multiboxing, especially it's so easy just to think, oh yeah, I'm just going to, oh, this is interesting. And yeah, I'm just going to finish this. And then you keep doing things on the phone. And neither is really effective. Sure, you get the quest done. Sure, you get a phone call done, but perhaps you're not landing the job. And depending on how important that is, I would, my preference would be uh, the game, the match you're playing right now, it's probably redoable. This phone call, you don't know if, if you're not grabbing the phone right now, if it's a job application, they might be intending to call you back, but the next candidate they called because you didn't pick up, got it because they were perfect. So the, you don't know the cost of not picking up a phone if you're looking for a job, for example. So my experience is recommend them to put it down, the headset, <laughs> mute the, the voice and the headset and shut close, um, sorry, shut down the screen, zero interaction with it. You can do this in three seconds before picking up. So you're present there. And, and if that, once again, if you're looking for a job, it's in a highly vulnerable and risky position. Of course, if you're all in very happy where you are in life, you can say, I'll call you back. Uh, or you can let it be for the voicemail or the text. But depending on how much leaning in you are towards change or how happy you are right now. But even if you're happy where you are right now, understanding what happens when you're focusing on something when you're also on the phone i remember previous girlfriends and a lot of i mean girlfriends saying well you sound so much more excited when i meet you in real life <laughs> on the phone you're always so dull and this was a young me not thinking about well i if i'm home i'm probably playing computer games and if you're calling me right now i'm gonna do both um and I didn't understand this energy level thing then. And things worked out fine anyway for me, but I'm quite sure that once again, this different energy level is really, really something that you want to preserve. Example, if you're looking for a job, if you have a candidate calling, or someone calling you when you're the candidate, but it goes for every interaction as well. If, if it is someone, you care about they're probably worth your kids presence and yourself likewise doesn't have to have to be the computer game it could be you watching Netflix too so be present when it matters and once again if you work abroad try staring into the empty wall and, and uh, you're probably gonna pick up things you've never thought about before like the change in mood, their, their voice tensionness, background, what, what's happening and how they, that affect their presence. Are they clicking on the keyboard, doing things differently? When you zoom out your noise and focus on what's happening there, that's gonna help them. And if that's a, kid, a skill you can teach your kid to choose to prioritize important calls, and with prioritize, I mean also say, no, I really, I'm really gonna play this game right now. But also, oh yes, this is important. I'm really gonna put this away. That it's excellent to talk about it before it's, it starts to happen in real life. Everything in real life is about prioritizing. 
And if once you get that, you will have a happy, successful life. So start here right now when they might have something they want to do, but it's probably quite short term. If they not invest five minutes focusing presently on a call, it's not going to damage their career a bit. But if they over time do again and again, do like this, it's going to damage their career. It's going to damage their game because they're not going to be present in it real and two. And once again, with the chance of this five minutes might really bloom something magnificent for them. So it's worth saying, well, sorry guys, I'm opting out. I'm AFK for five minutes. And of course, you can always change that. If you've taken the call for five minutes and you realize this is not heading where I want to be, you can you say, I'm going to call you back at this, or sorry, I, I, I'm, I was really busy and I just wanted to understand what this is, but could you call me back in 30 minutes? Or if it's really, really important after five minutes and you want to deep dive and continue the conversation, your friends will understand. And if they don't, they're not your friends. Then you might turn on the screen and, and with chat, don't talk, So, sorry, busy call still here uh, or still on the phone not coming back in a foreseeable future grab the next match without me you could and then let someone know on the phone sorry i really i i, I interrupted the meeting to grab your call i'm just gonna let them know i'm gonna be focusing on you once you say that you your kid appears so professional when people speak out loud i'm really prioritizing you it speaks of volumes about their character. So do encourage, encourage them to train that and be aware yourself so you don't misunderstand what's happening or a yes that isn't really a present yes or a no that's really not, I didn't hear you. So with that said, have a good one. Bye bye.